I talk about this hit piece from the New York Times against Donald Trump, Trump's entire family, his siblings, and most importantly, his late father, Fred Trump, who passed away in 1999, almost 20 years ago now. Now, this piece is very long. It took me about an hour really to get through it in between reading that and doing other things intermittently. But it's a long piece. If you want to read it, it's in the box. I suggest you map off your calendar. If you're about to get on a plane, you can read it there. But I digress. The main thing here was trying to paint Trump as somebody that is a tax evader, a tax fraud, a liar, and a person with an image that is not real, is pretentious, is made up, and it was all bankrolled by his father, Fred Trump. This whole thing about Donald Trump getting the loan for $1 million, they say that's not true. He got really about $60.3 million, and much of it was unpaid. A lot of other things. Let's start from the very beginning and talk about how they structure this particular piece. Now, one of the main things you'll see throughout this article is how to speak about money. They talk about money from yesterday as if it's today, right? Like, prime example, they talk about Donald Trump having the trust fund when he was three years old. In the trust fund, they said that he was getting paid 200 grand per year. Now, obviously, he's not going to be paid that money in cash. It'll be in the fund. Second of all, that 200 grand is what it's worth today, not what it was worth when Donald Trump was three years old 70 something years ago. Okay. They do that throughout the entire piece. They say an estimated X, Y, and Z amount of money. Uh, what is the equivalent of X, Y, and Z amount of money? They talk about old money as what it's worth today. The second thing is, like I said earlier, they're trying to basically discredit what Trump has done for himself. They say that everything that he's done, all the big businesses, all the big investments was basically bankrolled or somehow bailed out by his father, Fred Trump and the Fred Trump empire. You know, they don't want to call it a Donald Trump empire. They don't want to call it a, the Trump family empire. They say that everything was based on Fred. Now, let's not get it twisted. Fred was a prolific builder in New York City, has a lot of properties that are still there today. Matter of fact, I found out from this piece that he built some stuff in Norfolk right there by the military base. I think he built these apartments called Mariner's Cove or something right there off Little Creek. He built two apartment complexes, which are still there today. However, they're trying to say that all that money that he accumulated was distributed to the Trump kids in an improper and possibly illegal way as it relates to taxes. Now, what does improper mean? I like to know. That's just a personal opinion. You can look at a thing that's done in taxes, a tax strategy, as they call it, off about the piece and say it's improper. But who are you to judge? What makes you the grand arbiter of what is proper or improper? That's just how you feel about it. And as far as it being illegal, either it's illegal or it's not. This whole thing about possibly could be, maybe, nah, tell me if it's legal or if it's illegal. It doesn't matter how a thing looks. If it's legal, it's legal. One thing I know about taxes and tax law, I'm not a tax professional, don't get it twisted. But one thing I know about law in general is that there's always different ways to go about it, especially when you're talking about money, finances, taxes. Some of the things may seem kind of unorthodox. They may seem even a little illegal, but all of that is really irrelevant as long as you're following the law. And that's one thing that Trump said previously and also recently in the statement. We follow the law. You hire tax professionals, you hire lawyers, you hire accountants, and they follow the rule of the law to the T. That is their job to follow the law. Now, whether the average normie on the street thinks that it's uh, unscrupulous or whatever is totally irrelevant. As long as they're following the law, that's all that matters. But one thing they focused on in this piece, which they focused on way too much. They gave me too much information. It was too wordy, unnecessary. And before I even get into that, did you know there's a documentary coming out on Showtime this coming Saturday or Sunday about this? I forget what it's called. Um, I thought I had it over here in my notes, but I'll put that in the box. So this piece Aside from being a hit piece on Trump, which has gotten the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance on his back right now. Aside from that, they're also pushing this out there on this Wednesday to promote a documentary coming out this weekend. All right. It's PR. But back to the central point, 
they're trying to say that Fred Trump gave his uh, children, including Donald Trump, over a billion dollars through the years. And based on that, he should have paid about $550 million in estate tax. And if you don't know what estate tax is, that's basically the tax you pay once you die. It is based on how much money you have, your assets, all that kind of stuff. You pay 55%. I think that's in New York. The estate tax is not everywhere. Instead of paying five hundred fifty million, he paid about fifty two point five million, which is about five percent of that one billion. But see, they don't really understand the law, in my humble opinion. They were trying to say stuff like he was using shell companies, Fred Trump, that is Donald Trump's father, he was using shell companies to hide money or to inflate the price of things. Like one thing they were talking about was his apartment complexes. They were saying that he would go negotiate the price for a thing like boilers or air conditioners or something like that, refrigerators, and he would get a price in bulk to bring the refrigerators to a particular place, get them installed, get them purchased or whatever. And he would pay that money, but then there was another company that was set up that would bill Fred Trump for those, and then they would increase the price of what the actual thing was bought for. So let's say Fred Trump negotiated a price of $200 for a refrigerator directly to the actual person he's buying them from. And that's per refrigerator. Fred Trump would have allegedly this company pay that money. It wouldn't come straight from Fred. The company that would pay the money would then invoice Fred 20, 25%, maybe 30% higher than the actual purchase price. And then Fred would pay that invoice, which would transfer his money through that company. And then this company that was set up dispersed the money to the siblings. So that was a way to actually bypass the gift tax. And it was a way to drain money away from Fred. So he would not die with that kind of money on his back and end up paying 55% to the federal government. Now I can tell the New York times is triggered about that, but my question would be, if it's true, is it illegal? That's what I like to know. Is that illegal? I don't care about how it looks. I don't care about you thinking that the money should go towards a better cause, the federal government, because we all know the government spends money in the most scrupulous way. They never waste anything. They never do anything that's outside of the peer view of what they should be doing. But I digress. Even if they think that it's irrelevant, all that matters is, is it legal or is it illegal? That is it. And that is all. So, it seems to be like they're just trying to discredit Trump. They're trying to make him out to be some kind of a silver spoon baby, which he was to a certain extent. But at the same time, why just Trump? There were other Trump children. I mean, Fred Trump Jr., Donald Trump's oldest brother, passed away at age 42 from alcoholism. So why wasn't it him that was able to get the money and do a lot with it? He didn't have any assets when he passed away, except for, I think, a share in one apartment or some kind of trust fund or something like that he had since he was a child, but nothing else. Why was Trump the guy that was always out there moving and shaking and not really anybody else when it comes to the entrepreneurial thing? You can win the lottery. You can be given a hundred million dollars for a hundred million dollars. And then why not broke in a year? You got to be able to understand how to use money, how to have money work for you and how to manipulate money when necessary and how to follow the law. A lot of guys get hemmed up. And the whole tax thing, a lot of these athletes, uh, rappers, actors of all races, backgrounds and whatnot find themselves in tax trouble, especially the athletes. There's a story, a documentary about that part in me called ESPN 30 for 30 Broke, where they show all these athletes that get large sums of money at a young age and have no idea what to do with it. It shows them getting robbed by their accountant. So I think that it shows Donald Trump, even though he's had financial problems, he's still able to come out on top at the end of the day. I never seen Donald Trump get locked up or be under some kind of serious investigation for some kind of tax fraud. The IRS was all on top of what was going on throughout the years. So New York Times, none of you guys want to be investigative journalists. You want to try to give some hard hit and new information, but you're not really doing that. All you're doing is just putting a hit piece out there to promote a documentary that is based on what you have written. I don't know if the New York Times produced a documentary or not, but I was seeing little snippets of what could be a documentary in the piece. So I'm being sold as bill of goods 
that may or may not be true because I don't really see any evidence. They're saying, oh, we have evidence. And maybe I missed it. They were talking about they've done interviews with certain people that were in meetings that Trump and his family had about these particular things. I don't know if it's in the footnotes or not, but at the end of the day, there's not a lot of evidence presented in front of me. What I see is a bunch of could be, maybe, I don't know, with no real allegations of any kind of illegality. So I don't care what they did. I don't care how they took the money from Fred and give it to the rest of the family. At the end of the day, if it's legal, it's legal. And that's all you got to know about it. So what do you think? Do you think the New York Times has something here? Have you read the very long hit piece? How do you feel about them characterizing Donald Trump as a tax cheat, uh, tax fraud, uh, tax evader? I mean, what it really boils down to, like I said, is they don't appreciate some of the tactics that were used. They don't understand the difference between uh, taxable income and net worth because they were talking about in 76, his taxable income was $24,594, but his estimated net worth was like $200 million. That ain't the same thing. Your net worth may not even be income. It may not be any kind of liquid cash at all. It can just be what you as an individual are valued at, all right? It's not really based on actual real thing, and your taxable income comes after your deductions. But New York Times, they're going to push it out there to the masses because the masses does not really understand too much about taxes and how things really operate. And how do you feel about the estate tax, a.k.a. the death tax, that Donald Trump's father would have incurred if he had not given the money through different means to his children? How do you feel about the way he did it? Should he have just let the money sit in the bank or sit in assets, not done anything with it, and then let the state take the money? What are they going to do with it? Mark Zuckerberg gave the Newark Public Schools $400 million. And at the end of the day, as one teacher quoted, Raheem still can't read. What is the purpose in letting the state take the money if you can legally avoid them? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments.